So this is a critical issue that we are exploring and trying to think about what kind of uh, connections and uh, regional connections can be uh, created. Venezuela has just signed, for instance, a contract to build a pipeline uh, to uh, Argentina, which is a, a stretch compared to, how, what would distance would that be more or less? Well, it's like in the other direction, if you think from Caracas up to New York, that's about the distance. That's a four hour flight. So a project like this will have a big impact. And we do believe that uh, Latin America has also an important role in the, in the range of uh, sustainability. So um, what makes Caracas relevant? This is Lima, by the way, on the screen. It's a desert in Lima. So here we go. The first is that the city is profoundly modern. It was almost entirely developed on the back of the oil boom that began in the 1950s. We could choose other cities if we want to emphasize um, other aspects that make uh, cities relevant, like Buenos Aires for its European style and architectural development, or Rio de Janeiro for its picturesque setting and irresistible charm. But they're not important in the contemporary development of urban Latin America. Caracas is basically the idealization of the post-war urban explosion. It is the ideal city to present the condition in which not, not only most of Latin America, but most of the inhabitants of the global south have to face. The second reason is that Caracas is still a medium-sized metropolis and in a mature state with six million inhabitants. It is considered smaller than vast Latin American megacities like Mexico City or Sao Paulo, but in fact, these cities are less relevant for our purposes. A majority of the world's urban population actually lives in medium-sized cities, like Caracas, between 500,000 and 6 million inhabitants. And this will be increasingly be true in the future. The third idea that makes Caracas interesting for our purposes is that it, relative to its size, it is the largest and densest, has the largest and densest informal urban settlements in Latin America. And they're still growing and evolving. Caracas is a model of accelerated growth. Just to give you an example, those of you who know uh, Ciudad de Dios, the Brazilian film, that's Rocinha, which is the biggest barrio in Rio de Janeiro, and that has 180,000 inhabitants. Uh, not this barrio, which is 23 de Enero, but another barrio we'll show you later, or, or we showed in the beginning film, has about 800,000, the size of Rotterdam. So the third idea um, is, Caracas is a model of accelerated growth of the transformation of a magnificent valley with a tropical climate, abundant fresh water, and fertile soil into a dramatically overstretched, poorly planned urbanization. In this sense, it's comparable to many other cities of Latin America, but it's probably the strongest expression of the friction, even collision, between wealth and poverty. And this has mostly to do with the oil and the government uh, owning that oil. The city's economic growth is tied not only to an investment in diverse industries or commodities, but to a single factor, the petroleum rent. The result is a flourishing of services dependent on government and on the expense of, diverse, of a diverse economy. So finally, there's the fact that Caracas is in a political flux right now. So it is ripe for the introduction of new ideas that can capture the imagination of politicians. The Venezuelan president is attempting to reorganize Venezuela's role in the international scene and the Latin American scene with, and the perpetual oil rent, 2006 being the high record year, $70 a barrel, together with the government's desire for Caracas to become the center of a new left intelligentsia in Latin America is leading uh, is the leading city to take a protagonistic role in the Caribbean as well in the rest of Latin America. As we begin to talk about the informal city, we want to focus on growth. Runaway growth over the past half century has changed the facts on the ground in modern Latin American metropolises. And that's absolutely fundamental, that we as architects understand what has happened. You see here in a little animation, like the development of the cities. Uh, it doesn't give you the dates. However, I will uh, supply you with, with that information. The city was founded in 1567. And in the last, let's say, 450 years, it grew from a little uh, post-colonial settlement into a city that has now an extension 
uh, from the founding nine blocks around a central square, uh, it grew into something that has 800 square kilometers of urbanized territory. As described in our book, Informal City, Caracas Case, the, uh, actually Adolfo, I don't know if he brought the book, but it would be nice to reach it around maybe so we can have a look at it while we talk. Um, is Adolfo here? Ah, he's bringing it now. Okay, please do that. As described in our book, Informal City, Caracas Case, the unofficial or excluded zones of Caracas, what is called in Caracas the barrios, what you might know as favelas or shanty towns, or somebody said to us today during the interview, slums, uh, assertively contradict the general characterization as territories dominant by natural disasters, drug-related crime, illicit economy, and squatter settlements. Then why do we know so little about these human agglomerations? Why do we treat informal zones as blind spots in our cities? These questions have become the mission of the urban think tank over the last years. So how then can we understand the informal city? In our view, two analytical concepts are particularly useful. These are regional urbanization and informal globalization. By regional urbanization, we're referring to the processes by which cities now not only expand rapidly, but develop into polycentric networked urban regions. By informal globalization, we are talking about the worldwide rise of the informal city. Its improvisation and flexibility make it a key aspect of, not an exception to, the global economy. We could in fact say we are witnessing the birth of a new 21st century urbanism. And I want to point out, uh, you might think, well, polycentric cities, we know that. Cities are growing, incorporating settlements that existed around it. Uh, in South America, obviously, uh, uh, a place where you had that founding, original founding cities, we are talking about a place which is uh, in, in a big extent in a, still in a virgin state in its nature, and as cities expand, uh, there are no other cities around them. As cities grow, they're creating their polycentric structure within this expanding regional urbanism. Um, we don't present these ideas as concrete, crystallized des uh, designations, like the image of the informal city itself. They are analytical guidelines, ways to capture the trends and coincidences we have observed. They only have explanatory power to the extent that they are good descriptions of what is actually occurring there. But there are no easy explanations for inform informalism, and we can offer uh, only our own approximations to that. So Caracas right now is in the process of what we call regional urbanization, or has been mentioned with the Urban Age pro project by Ricky Burdett also. It is the same thing that has happened in Mexico City, Sao Paulo, Los Angeles, and regional urbanization is replacing our old ideas of suburbanization of the core and the periphery. Cities are not simply growing outward from a center, they are regionalizing and developing into a polycentric networked urban region. So we can ask ourselves if this is something that has to do with modernism, maybe. But we can also ask ourselves, uh, looking at the example of Caracas, what modernism are we talking about? Is this the image of the modern city, the idea of the skyscraper, of, of vertical growth, of uh, the intervention of big capital in the cities? Or is this also a sort of modernism, the, the collision of two countries within the same territory? As you might see there, well, it doesn't come out that good, but the, the top line says the uh, an analyst in Venezuela says the, the el país marginal should be absorbed by the país dominante. In the meantime, that has almost changed because what, what they are referring to as país marginal is obviously the self-built city. The reality is in the informal city, uh, the, the, the whole concept of informality has invaded practically every aspect of urban Caracas by now. So maybe this is the modern city of today not the skyscraper skyline which is presenting itself on the postcards of Caracas. So um, we could say that metropolitan Caracas has six million inhabitants, while the Caracas city region, which you see here and uh, next, okay. We can go to this one here. Okay. Caracas city region also has uh, these other cities, Maracay and Valencia, 
have a tremendous impact on Qatar.